In the previous lesson, we looked at the simplest conditional structure, which was an if that had a true fork. And in the program we created for the even or odd, we created a, a prompt where we said that the number entered by the user was odd. And then if that number was divisible by two with the remainder of zero, then we changed that prompt to say that it was even. Let's change this up a little bit because in the more common way to do this would be to use a slightly different structure called the if-else structure. In an if-else, we ask our Boolean question as we did before, and here we have a true fork like we did before with the if structure, but then we also add an else clause which contains a totally different process that will take place if that Boolean condition evaluates to false. Both paths continue on with statements then after that if structure. In this case of our flowchart would be the output. In our Python code we write this as if our Boolean expression followed by a colon and then all the statements when executed if it's true indented under that. And then for our false fork or false block we start with an else all the way back over to the left so it's underneath that if with a colon, and then the statements when execute if that Boolean is false. The statements to continue after either one of those forks is again moved all the way over to the left. Let's take a look at this in a Python program. So here's the program we wrote earlier to figure out if a number that the user enters is even or odd. And we had a default prompt variable where we set the number to odd, and then we just used a simple if structure that only had a true fork. We're going to change this and use an if else instead. And in doing that, I no longer need this line, so I'm just going to delete it. And then after our true block for our if structure, I'm going to add all the way back over to the left an else structure. And this will be for our false fork. So it's the word else, all lowercase, and a colon. And then indented under that are the statements that I want to execute if the Boolean expression evaluates to false. So we'll take our number, convert it to a string, and then we'll concatenate is odd. And then the next line is remaining from our previous example where we're going to print the prompt value, or that's our output statement. And notice that it's back over to the far left. It's not part of this if-else structure. There is our if-else structure, those four lines. Now again, you can have as many lines as you need in the true fork and as many lines as you need in the false fork. Only one of those will execute. If this is true, that executes. But if it's false, that executes. Well, let's try running our program. So again, I'm being asked for an integer. I'm going to put in 45 press the enter key and I'm told that 45 is odd. I'm going to run it another time. This time we'll put in 44 and told that that is even. So based on the number again it's going to do one of those two forks and then print out the results in both cases.